Detroit was considered a mythical city until archaeologist Heinrich Schleimann discovered the remains of the city in 1871. Archaeological digs have brought up many truths about the history of Troy and about the Trojan War, which supposedly occurred around 1250 BC. The war is the subject of the epic poem The Iliad by Homer, as well as many other poems, plays, operas and other artistic pieces. The legend of the Trojan War has had many interpretations over the years, including many dramatical and musical performances. Perhaps the best representation is the 1858 opera based on the epic poem by Virgil, Aeneas. Berlioz's opera, La Troyan, in English, The Trojans. The first one and a half hours depict the Trojans celebrating the end of the Greek siege of Troy that lasted for ten years. The scenes show how the people of Troy pull the famous Trojan horse with the Greek soldiers inside it into their city, despite the ardent warnings of Cassandra and the ensuing fall of Troy. Aeneas, a Trojan leader, escapes with sailors and ships. They sail past Greece and Sicily to Tunisia. The second part of La Troyans is set in Carthage, an ancient town in Tunisia, near the capital Tunis in North Africa. Dido, the queen of Carthage, falls in love with Aeneas, commander of the Trojan fleet. But just when his troops are happy to stay in peaceful Carthage, Aeneas is pushed to follow his original dream. Therefore, he and his ships leave for Italy, while Dido, the heartbroken queen, commits suicide, which is depicted most dramatically in Berlioz's orchestration of this scene. Berlioz died before completing the masterpiece, and the final three acts were performed under the title Le Trions a Carthage. They premiered with many cuts by Leon Cavallo's company, the Theatre Lyrique, on the 4th of November 1963, with 21 repeat performances. The letters Berlioz wrote during the composition of his monumental work express a profound sense of exhilaration and fulfilment. He was conscious that the great task of his life was upon him. Because all the different strands of his art were coming together for a supreme and crowning effort, who gave him the final incentive to start writing the opera, was Princess Caroline Sanwetigenske, the mistress of Franz Liszt. She was a great admirer of Berlioz's music. Musical masterpiece is an important historical part of the legend of Troy. Hence, it is included in the City Museum's exhibition of Troy. Berlioz's opera is accurate in regards to the way it is interpreted, the information contained in the Aeneid, Virgil's poem based on Homer's Iliad, which is considered to be the most historically accurate interpretation of the legend. Since the opera was not completed in its entirety by Berlioz, it can be said that it may have been subject to artist's bias and may have skewed the accuracy of the performance. The opera was first written in French, but was thrown out of the French box office and not performed there till the late 60s. The first performance was in 1921 in London. Therefore, since the languages have different translations for particular words, the interpretation of this may have changed based on the language it was performed in. Les Trions is a great adaptation of the myth and has allowed many people the opportunity to experience the myth in depth and live the Trojan War. It has allowed a greater understanding of the past and the legend of Troy and the Trojan War, as well as the aftermath of the battles and the life and love of Aeneas and other characters from the Aeneid. depicting the scene in the Iliad where Achilles fights Hector. Used for mixing wine and water and made in Athens about 500 to 480 BC, this vase shows the main characters of the legend in battle. The vase provides evidence for the importance of the legend in Greece as well as poignant information about the war and its interpretations from elsewhere in Greece. 
Since the fight was against the Ottoman Empire, pottery and other art from Greece would have signified the fall of the empire and the victory of the Greeks against the Trojans. Vase Painter captures the essence of the story. Achilles, his name inscribed beside him, as are all the names in this scene, strides forward. Hector, already wounded in two places, staggers and begins to fall backwards to the right. Gods flank the heroes. Athena, richly dressed, helmeted, wearing her aegis and holding a spear, reaches towards Achilles. Apollo, on the far right, retreats from the scene. He turns back to have one last look at Hector and holds his arrow parallel to Hector's falling spear, a subtle visual indication of support and sympathy.